sometimes what just like you know what you don't see makes it more scary in the same sense you know what you don't hear and how much you don't hear uh, makes it become more scary so we took a first pass basically where we had them you know the direction was we just need to make them very scary they need to be scary and that led to us uh, having them vocalize a lot uh, through scenes. And then as we, we played these scenes back for ourselves and with John and with the producers, we realized, you know what? They're making too much sound. It's, it's not scary anymore. So we started stripping sounds back and suddenly it became much more scary. It's never just like a, you get it on the first try. It's more of a journey. And, and it's a very gut level thing. Like, is this fulfilling the emotional purpose of the sound we're going for? Is this painting the behavior of this creature and the variety of behaviors? And most importantly, is it working for the story? And does it fit in the scene? And is it believable? These creatures are blind. They basically navigate through the world using sound to create a 3D map of, of the geography and of the world around them. We wanted to come up with a new a new sound, something that hadn't been heard before to, to use for these clicks, but use it in, in a pattern that would say to an audience who didn't know, oh, that sounds like some kind of echolocation. Essentially, a stun gun is a series of little zaps. And, but when slowed down, um, it sounds like these individual clicks that are kind of in a weird way rem reminiscent of like an alien dolphin. Um, so we re-recorded that for, for the movie. Um, the, and the way we do it is we hold the stun gun up to um, a grape because a grape has a little skin on it um, and a wet interior so it will conduct the electricity. And then we can get all this variation of clicks and purrs out of that. That makes me jump. We're losing charge, <laughs> but that's essentially it.